this week. It's the Air Gold Cup, so handicap heaven, which I'm sure one of our panel will appreciate more than the others, and that person is pulling a lovely face right now. Uh, we're joined by Michael Andrews, as always. Give him a nice wave, Michael. <laughs> uh, Callum Medell, and on the other end, Adam Webb. Hello. Who's looking very serious tonight. Uh, we'll get straight into it, and probably one of the easier races of the afternoon, uh, the 150 at Newbury. So we'll go for Callum, because I know he likes the good horse in this one. Yeah, well, we, we both agree on this one, and it's it's got to be Cassiano for me. He's one of my... I, I absolutely love this horse. I, I loved him in Dubai when he, he went on a real run of winning actually. some very decent handicaps. What's that? I think that's illegal, actually. Illegal? <laughs> you were saying you are in love with a horse. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can like horses. Um, <laughs> You're judging. I, I can hear them. Um... <laughs> yeah, but I, I I love I love Cassiano. I really do. And he's done absolutely nothing wrong and he he did lose his unbeaten run in a very good moving up into a graded company and then was ninth in the Dubai World Cup. He came back uh well, had his first run in Britain thirty five days ago at Newmarket when he ran out of very impressive condition stakes winner at Newmarket, beating Trade Commissioner and Viewpoint. That's that's pretty solid form. He's Arguably, well, just about the one to beat on figures, even though Camborne is a pound higher officially, but Camborne's obviously got his uh, uh, his problems, even though he won last time out, and uh, Cassiano, I think, is just an absolute class act. He travels really well, should go fine on the ground. His first run uh, on his debut was on very soft ground, and he won, so yeah. he should be okay on it, and he's a bomb-proof 13-8 to eight shot tomorrow. Yeah, and I, I may have a feeling that Michael's against it, uh, yeah, I haven't really decided yet. Um, Cassiano, yeah, I, I respect all the form there, and he's a pretty good horse. But I do think it depends on the ground. If it does get, does get really soft, I'm not sure about Cassiano's form. He has got most of his form comes comes on good ground or on the all weather. But Campbell seems to really like soft ground, as he did when um winning last time at Got Doncaster when two lengths clear. And I think possibly that could be uh, Cassiano's weakness and Camborne seems to relish the soft conditions. So that would be, um, it would be t- between those two. Gifted Girl is obviously classy, but um, I think she was second to Dank, who obviously took the um, uh, the uh, medication available. I'm not sure if it's quite medication <laughs> or uh, the drugs available in the um, Beverly D in um, America last time. And I'm not sure if Gifted, the Gifted Girl did. If she didn't, then that makes her performance all the better. But if she did... Mm, she's probably not going to perform to the same level this time. So Camborn, probably for me, Castellano is obviously the main danger if it gets, but that's mainly if it gets on good ground. Yeah, and Adam? I think I'm of the knowledge that Gifted Girl actually didn't run on yeah, the um, basics. I don't think she did. Um, I'm with um, Luke and uh, Callum here. Uh, Castellano actually won his first race as a two-year-old on very soft ground at Fontainebleau. And all I'm going to say is basically what um, Callum said earlier on, and they're my reason for him winning. I don't see him being beaten tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it's I'm, a very short one for me. After the I'm, I'm, last week. I'm completely with you three on this. I, I, I do think that Campbell's probably the threat after winning last time at York, but I just think Cassiano's a completely different league to these, <laughs> to be quite honest, after his last win. Um, before we move on to the next race, I'd just like to say... Um, if you're watching and you have a specific view on a race next week, or ne- next week, no, sorry, tomorrow, um, tweet any of us or me, at LukeElder13, on Twitter, and we'll try and answer your question, or if you've got a, anything horse racing related, then tweet us and we'll try and read it out for you. And we'll move on to the 205 at air. And uh, we'll start with Adam. Well, I'm going to go with here that has got um, very good form actually in Group Ones, and I um, gave him, up, I put him up in our first video actually in the Great Voltage Over, and it's Willie the Whipper. Uh, unfortunately, that day he did not handle the ground at all. It was too quick for him, and it was obvious from very early on that he wasn't going to take um, a cut at the finish. Uh, back on softer ground tomorrow, and I think he's, I think he's actually a big prize considering that run behind him, Tello, in the pre de Jockey Club. Uh, the main threat for me is actually First Mohican, who I also think will um, like to give in the ground. And if it was going to 
have a bet in this race, it would actually be a forecast on William the Whipper and First Mohican. So I am very much looking forward to going over hurdles, I must add. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Michael? Um, I don't know. I was with First Mohican. He's got some pretty good form, um, especially the three quarters of length third in the Deauville Group 3. And then you can forgive his next run in a Group 2, despite being further behind the horse uh, Trey Blue, that he was only three lengths. Three, three and a quarter... Uh, th- Three quarters of a length (laughs) behind (laughs) on the first occasion. Um, However, Sharistan, he ran poorly on his last start in Maidan, but his form after breaks are pretty good. He's won both starts, so that's probably the danger for me. I would like first Mohican to win, but Sharistan is a big danger and is worthy of favouritism. Yeah, and uh, Callum? Yeah, I think first Mohican's definitely the uh, solid option. He's got pretty strong form in the book, including that win at York. Sharistan, I'd be, I'd actually be strongly opposing tomorrow. I think he's going to need the run. I, his maiden form doesn't add up. It just didn't work out whatsoever. He's got good form on soft when he was in Ireland, but it's not form that's worthy of him to be a 9-4 favourite tomorrow. Hadras and Media Hype, two horses I do like a lot, but they're both having their seasonal reappearances quite late in the year. Yeah. And so I think it's between Willie and the Whipper and First Mohican. Willie Whipper should enjoy the, the ground more. Yeah. Uh, so it's between those two. Yeah, that's the reason that I'm siding with Willie the Whipper here, just for the ground. Last time, absolutely hated it. Was it? It was it fifth in the German oh, Guineas? No, in the, in the Great Bowl at York. No, was it? It, it ran in the German race. No, nah, it's it? since then. Yeah, no, no. A while back. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, but. Yeah, the ground he'll be much more home on. Or she'll be much more home on, sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I just think the Woolly the Whip is overpriced. And it's actually a bit weak tonight, actually. A few bookmakers have pushed out from only half a point, five to, fives to 11 to 2. But um, I do think Woolly the Whip is probably the one to serve it up to the protagonist in the field. And if you fancy something it's wearing that, you're screwed because there's a non runner in Fort Belvedere. So it's down to two places, unfortunately. But we'll move on to the 220 at Newbury. And uh, another fairly hot favourite. What do you guys reckon of this? Adam? Uh, Shamson, yeah. He was uh, impressive on debut at um, Sandown before he went on to Doville and won there quite nicely. Uh, I think he'll win tomorrow. Uh, Supplicant yeah. is... Well, Supplicant is a decent two-year-old in his own right. Um, he won last time out. Of, he won a listed contest at Ripon. He was also second at the Royal Meeting in the Windsor Castle behind Extortionist. But I really like Jamson and Frankie Dottori, obviously, because he rides for the owner. And I, the owner's, ni- uh, owner's name, Alfani, that's it. I couldn't get that in my head then. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the things that slipped out. Um, but Jamson, for me, I think he'll be unbeaten this season. And... Yeah, yeah. Easy. quite an easy selection for me. Yeah, and uh, Callum, are you siding with us? I'm not. I'm not too sure on Sh- Shamson. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't be backing him at the price. He has got a lofty reputation. He's done absolutely nothing wrong in his two starts over five furlongs, and he looks like he needs this trip. I would have doubts on the ground, um, but I, I don't know if there's anything there to beat him if he is anything yeah. above average. It was supplicant. Supplicant is a solid horse, but I don't think he, he should be good enough if there's anything any anything slightly above average. Figure of speech is the same as well. I think Hot Streaks may be worth another chance after his Kempton run where he just didn't have there any chance of getting to the race where they they really uh he just he just missed a beat at the start and then he was just never in contention really. So he had a fairly easy race there. Two weeks later he comes here and he's he's not shown his best ability yet, so I Rather be on him, but I, I, I'm not sure I'd really be backing him. I think it's the race yeah. I'll probably leave, but Hot Streak, a tentative selection. Yeah, well, you actually touched on a question that we've got. It's good foreshadowing there. Uh, as Tom says, is uh, Sham- Shamshan, <laughs> Sorry. Shamshan really as good as what the book is pricing at? It's 9-4, to four, but is there, a, is there a threat? And I think that is the case for him. I think... He's probably not going to be the strongest bet of the day, but there's nothing really to challenge him. For me, anyway. As, uh, uh, Michael, we'll go to you. What do you think of this race? No, it's I'm like Callum. I'm pretty much... There's a few, you know, there's Anticipated, who's pretty much had his runs, had his races, and he's been uh, done that, basically. And Supplicant's won 
two easy races. So it'll be interesting if he can um, bounce back here um, in a much uh, tougher race. But other than none of them really excite me. It'll be interesting how the uh, outstrip form settles with Cable Bay. Um, see how run how uh, yeah. well he runs. But otherwise, no, I just I wouldn't touch it. Yeah, I, I do think it's got no bet race written all over it. To be quite honest, it one. One more thing to mention, uh, it's, it's not usually a race that Richard Hannon goes for with, with good horses because he hasn't won it for a good seven years but he's had runners every year. The only horse he's had any sort of chance with going into it is Librano and he was beat at about 5-2 to two. so yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if, this is, if they really think this is a serious enough horse and I, I would definitely be opposing yeah. but there's nothing to oppose with so yeah. it's a real they look, catch-22. They look to have found a nice weak race with it if you will. Um, yeah. I mean you're not going to get many yeah. group 2s that uh, are as uncompetitive as this to be quite honest. I mean, thank, in a way thank god that he's turned up because otherwise I wouldn't have a clue what to back in it. But <laughs> we'll move on to the first of our big handicaps yeah. on the Silver Cup. And uh, Michael, I know you'll be biting at the bit for this one. Yeah, I've kind of struggled with this one. I wasn't quite sh so sure. Um, take cover for me obviously stands out after his uh, massive run after a break um, in the Goodwood race last time. I just uh, narrowly denied by a nose, just um, just caught on the line. Um, but the problem looking back in his form, his best runs uh, actually come after a break. He won at Haydock on heavy after a break last September. And then the, his next race after that was not so good. He was turned over when only six... Um, uh, at Kempton in a class four and then since then didn't show his best so it's a question whether he can actually produce uh, that best that he re obviously was an amazing performance last time out at Goodwood um, and I would probably end up siding possibly with Pearl Ice who won last time out on soft and is uh, a bit unexposed at this kind of trip um, others to possibly include Rodrigo de Torres, I think should run well. Sir Reginald um, won last time at Doncaster, but possibly the step down in trip will not suit. Yeah, yeah, I sound confident. I'm shocked. No, not so much. I don't. I don't like it as much. Yao, I really like Yao, but I'm not sure if he's going to win this race. I like it because of the name. That's a brilliant name. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Callum. Yeah, I've, I've got a fairly uh, fairly confident fancy here. I, I do actually really like Harrison George tomorrow. He's he's found a bit of form again for uh, PGA O'Gorman. He, he's tried the blinkers three starts ago at Nottingham and he won. He then won at Leicester after that and he ran a cracker last, was it two weeks ago at Haydock? Yeah went second to confession over five furlongs, which is a um, a trip that was, was a bit on the stiff side for him uh, at his best. And, yeah, he's just in really, really good form. He's off a mark of 95 tomorrow. He's due to go up to 98 after this because it was an early closing race. Natasha Eaton takes off five. He's never been at the, the first four in races at air, including second in this in 2008. He's at his best for Richard Farr. He was rated 114, so... If he can produce anything like that, then I think he's got a great a great chance. He should go fine on the ground. I think there's a, a lot going for him. He's pr pretty well drawn as well. Um, so yeah, Harrison George for me. I think he's a, he's he's got a really strong chance. Yeah, he's just got the small hurdle of 26 other runners in the field. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Adam. I'll admit this race is a lot harder to do than the Air Gold Cup. I will admit that straight away. I actually think this is a harder race. Um, I actually agree with Callum and Harrison George, and uh, just to add to what he said, he gets on very well with Natasha Eaton as well, mm -hmm. who claims yeah. the five, because the last three he, she's ridden him, and all three times he's been in the placing, so that uh, would be my one of my selections. I also like Sir Reginald, I actually think the setback in trip will help, but my only concern for him is the draw, because he, not it's not because the winner, well, the winner of the Bronze Cup came from 25, but we don't know where the pace... Well, the pace apparently comes from the high numbers. So if the pace comes down there, he might struggle to get into the race. Um, there were a couple of bigger prizes. Michael mentioned Rodrigo de Torres, who was third behind Baccarat in the Great St. Wilfred, and I think he'll have a big chance. Because I think the ground... Apparently it's drying up a little bit there. Yeah. So if it keeps drying up, he'll have a chance. And there was another one that I rated as well, which is Thunderball, but I think he'd want the ground a bit softer. <laughs> I'm finished now. <laughs> Michael will be back in a second. He's gone for a nap. 
I'm I'm gonna go for a picture dealer here, who may not have the strongest profile judging the last two runs, but last time ran a Epsom, and you can forget that he actually hated the track, but uh, he. It was notable that day there was a lot of money for him. It went off even money, and I think it was something like, you may have been able to get 11-4 to or something like that, like that night before, and you've always got to respect the Gary Moorhorse when it's being gambled in like that. I and mean, they, they backed it like defeat was out of the question, but like I say, he just hated the track so much and came behind hopes and dreams that day. But Goodwood, again, was fancied, but didn't really deliver too much and finished midfield. So... It, the, the one thing that I, I that really stuck out to me is this is the only horse that Gary Moore's taken up to air all weekend, and it's the only northern horse that he's actually uh, got this weekend as well. So to take a horse from about 10 minutes from where I live, and with, with, he drains his Siswood, which is down in Sussex, to take one all the way up to air, he's a uh, he's, he's got to fancy it a little bit. So I, I say picture dealer each way. I think you can get about 20 to one on him. So picture dealer for me, but. Again, there's that small hurdle of 26 other horses, which is just outrageous. <laughs> we'll move on to Newbury in the 255, and uh, we'll start with Cullen. Yes, it's a tough handicap, this one. <laughs> I am going yes. to go... <laughs> I'm going for, going for, for Trade Commissioner, who just... There's, there's been glimpses lately that he's returning to the sort of form that he promised to show... In the middle of last year, he won a handicap here over a mile, well, the Coral Challenge, actually, in July, and he was very impressive, and he didn't go on from that in, in group company. He's off a similar mark uh, that he's been around since then, 104 he's off at the moment, but he, sh he really, he ran a really good race last time. He, he wasn't really put into the race here over 10 foot, over course and distance, and he's only beaten three lengths. It's a better race than what this is uh, tomorrow. He should go okay on the ground. He's got some decent form on good to soft ground, including that, that sand down win here. So I think I'll chance him at around 7-1. to one. I think that's a fair enough price. Yeah. He's definitely going to be in the top three. He may not have enough to win, but there's not much I, I really think that will handicap. So trade commissioner for me, top weight. Yeah, and Adam? Um, I fancy the lady successful runner disclaimer, who was far too keen over two miles behind leading light in the Queen's Vars. Stepping back here, the man the quarter, he's won on heavy, he's, he's won on soft before. Um, he could he could be very well handicapped, for all we know, he could be. But I, I think tomorrow, the, they'll expect a big run. James Bell takes the ride as he's now the... Uh, uh, um, yeah, got me. <laughs> go he's now claimed, yeah, by uh, Judd Mont. So uh, he, I think he'll win tomorrow. But one at a bigger price, Fennel Bay, who ran yeah. well at, in the same race as Fake Commissioner. Oh. We've got a question about Disclaimer from uh, saying, is Disclaimer as good of a price as I think? 6-1 to one back at the right distance, we'll love the ground, yes or no? Yes. 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 I agree. <laughs> is Michael saying yes as well? I am. I'm actually agreeing with Adam for probably the first time in history. Are you, uh, Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I, I am actually feeling a bit dodgy. but um, <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Disclaimer... I. I, it's hard to judge up the the weight of this race. I don't understand why Voodoo Prince is so popular. He's a bit of a monkey at best of times. And uh, okay, better run last time out, but on the whole, he's been quite disappointing. And maybe he's getting better, but we'll see. And so I think disclaimer could be a bit of a class act in this race. Trade Commission has got a bit too much weight for my liking. Yeah, and are we on to me? Have it, yeah, everyone said they're a bit, haven't they? Yeah. Going crazy. <laughs> I'm siding with half a guinea in this Going. one. Uh, uh, gone? <laughs> yeah. I'm signing with half a guinea in this one who uh, Ryan Tate takes five pounds off and ran okay last time at Ripon but the step up in trip definitely looks up his alley and it's only well it's an extra two furlongs but I, I think that that should see to or should see him to good effect whether he's good enough to win a race like this I'm not sure but a 10 to 1 is I think outstanding each way value but it looks a competitive race and to answer Tom's question uh, I'd say disclaimer no so with, with two no's and two yeses for that question yeah I'm no disclaimer definitely yeah I just think I, I, I don't like backing horses that have had because he, he really had a had a torrid time at Ascot he had a very hard race because he pulled so hard so yeah. he's got a lot to prove coming back I think 
So there you go, Tom. If you want a decisive answer, you're going to have to go somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> Um, right on the fence there. Yeah, exactly. We we don't have a clue. <laughs> the only thing there before before we go on, it, to his advantage, he has had a break though. That's the only thing that will make will, will sway me for tomorrow. If it, if it had come out like two weeks after or last, yeah, yeah, yeah I'd yeah. really unconfident. Then, but he's had three months, so that maybe back. suggests he might need the run then. Could do. Yeah. He won on his um, return to action by five lengths, so I wouldn't have thought he'd have too much problem with that. He yeah. won at Doncaster on his uh, return to action in he April, so him. we'll see. So Tom, Tom's spot of debate here now. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to hate each other by the end of this video. <laughs> uh, we're going to go back up to Frozen North, and we're going to go We're going to go to Air in the 3.15, and... Who are you siding with in this one, Adam? Uh, Bologna. And the reason I am right, siding with Bologna... <laughs> oh, sorry, Michael. Um, no, no, don't be Michael sorry. Michael's changed his voice. <laughs> no! <laughs> looked, okay, she looked at Philly on the upgrade when she won at Goodwood. And my other reason for going for her is that she's the only one in the field to actually have Group 1 entries, which shows that she is obviously highly thought of. I think the main danger is the... Uh, remember you who was second last time out behind Great White Eagle and she will go on the ground as well but I just think Bologna is the one tomorrow uh, and Michael are you spitting fire right now or? No 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 I was just going to give you a tip for this race back another horse in the air gold cup just leave this race just don't even bother <laughs> <laughs> there you go there's uh, I'm 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 not sure what to make of that from Michael, but <laughs> so we we don't have a selection from Michael in this one. Okay. Pick an just pick pick a number. Um, in the Air Gold Cup. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Callum, save us. <laughs> I, I don't think I can. I, I'm not I'm not going to have a bet in this race either, unfortunately. But I think <laughs> they um. I'm immature. The good, the Goodwood Maiden that Valonia won and Coramus was a notable eye catcher in. I think that's the form line you need to look at. I think that that's a lot stronger than the majority of this field, apart from possibly remember you, who's done pretty well behind Great White Eagle, who we don't know who, how good he is. So yeah. that's definitely the form line, and I think Coramus is certainly the better price. So because I mean Cormus just flew home that day and was a lot less experienced obviously that was her debut in Valonia's second run so yeah, yeah uh, I'll go Cormus stealing and all my facts <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, th this race actually disappointed me because it's cut apart so much with three of them running yesterday and Mecca's Angel and the RT well sorry two of them running yesterday and Valen who we I think we all like as a horse but it's not running unfortunately, but I'm going with Coral Mist. I, I actually really fancy Coral Mist tomorrow. Um, as Callum said, it was an eye catcher at Goodwood first time up behind Valonia in probably was a very strong race. And then next time out, uh, Haydock absolutely bolted up pretty much, beating Maletta, who's a fairly decent yardstick for Jeremy Nasida. And to be honest, I, I don't... Uh, I can see that... Uh, Corum is definitely turning the tables with Valonia, but remember you is definitely the danger for David Watchman. So that it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top, but I do think that Corum Mist has definitely got a very, very solid chance tomorrow, especially in the ground as well. And Tom Queeley will be sporting his nice black eye to go with the horse. <laughs> Did any of you see that throughout the week, actually? Yeah. That was a massive play. That was fantastic. <laughs> we'll go on to the sprint at Newbury, the 3.30, and uh, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I really, 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 really want Kingsgate Native to win this. I'm worried about the uh, ground. He needs... He may not be running. Robert uh, he may not be running. Rob yeah, okay, if Robert the ground did get a bit softer, then I would be a Robert Cow said worried. today. That, Robert Cow said today that he was very unlikely to run. Uh, okay. Well then, I will go on to probably what I would have thought Callum will mention after he destroyed his chances in the Beverly uh, race, uh, predicting the future there, and York Glory. I think, obviously, he was unlucky in the race. It's interesting that James Doyle's got the ride now, and York Glory should be delivered late and probably win. It's an interesting race. There's a few... Uh, 
Oh, um, and it's a good mixture of horses. Um, Angels Will Fall is also in there, so this could be a bit of a dodge race for, for yeah. Callum. I think this is a race that Callum's going to hate. <laughs> York, York, York Glory, he backed and found nothing but trouble at Beverly. Angels Will Fall, he tipped up last week and it won at 16, and he didn't back it. So who are you not going to back this week, Callum? Well... I mean, there's there's that the Stepper Point, who's one of my biggest cliff horses in history, and <laughs> and, and and beat your glory last time yeah. out. So, uh, I'm actually I think I'm gonna go for Mar I'm gonna go for Lee Mall and go for Marek, who I think will Ooh, be a lot yeah. better for his run last week. Definite tricast. He needs he needs soft ground, obviously, which he, he showed when he won on British Champions Day last year. His form on soft early in the season was better than anything in this field. And if he's ready, well, uh, the, the uh, connections are saying he's ready for uh, a good run tomorrow. So it's a really traffy race. I mean, there's a couple of pounds between the majority of the field. And yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put steps out of it either, who brings very good handicap form to the table. So I think he could run a, a big race. But I'm just going to edge with, with Marek. Yeah, I think I definitely think Marek holds the key to this one, actually. If it's just how he runs. If mm. he if he's on a going day, then yeah, he should win. He's entitled to win. But I don't trust him overly. <laughs> um, Adam, who are we starting with? Um, I'm actually going to agree with Callum and go for Marek. Um, one of one of the things that like, <laughs> that's not a good thing, Callum. <laughs> well, the thing is, I actually thought your glory would have been better off in the end. Because I actually think he's a better horse in a big field where he's got something to aim at for the whole race and he can go through yeah. horses. I actually thought yeah. he would have had a chance in that. Um, obviously, he can do that tomorrow, but I actually think a bigger field would suit him. Uh, but Marek, as Callum said, he will like the ground tomorrow, uh, one on British Champions Day, and I think he is ready. he'll be ready to win a big race tomorrow on ground that he likes. Yeah, I'm going to go for a, another mudlark. And probably one left field. And I'm guessing that Michael's going to pull a very weird face at this one. I'm going to go for uh, Ballesteros each way, <laughs> who, granted, hasn't beat a rival in his last two runs. <laughs> it's come 17th of 17 and 19 of 19. So the form's there to see. I'm interested to see what Michael's writing about my selection right now. <laughs> um, but if you go back, it came fourth in an abbey behind Wizkid, which is pretty strong form for any sprinting division. Uh, Right, what division? Then he won on bottomless Sandown and Chester, and it was very soft that day. And he hasn't had this kind of ground for a while. What's Michael saying? Good luck, Good luck with that. that. Yeah. that that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's finally got the soft ground again, so could hold each way chances. But I'm not sure. We'll have to bounce back a heck of a lot, though. So it's a tentative choice. But like I said, I do think that Marek holds the key to this as to whether he performs or not. If he does, he wins. If he doesn't, then who knows who wins, to be quite honest. And from a confusing race to a really simple race in the Air Gold Cup. And before we go into that, uh, last chance to get any questions in, um, tweet me, at LugeElder13. And then we'll read the questions out. Actually, speaking of questions, we had one question on this one. Uh, steps. steps, yeah. What was the question? Uh, from Is he James, number five? Yeah. No, no he's not. <laughs> from James <laughs> from James Gubb. Uh, hi, guys. I think Steps will uh, be there in the 330. Ultra consistent horse, what do you think? I think he's very hard to win with. He was unlucky last week, though. He was beaten by the shortest of short margins. I, mm -hmm. I actually looked at the picture, and there's a picture where he's clearly not won. I yeah. feel quite sorry for him. So, uh, the worrying bit for me, in his last three runs, he's come second in each one. And this is a step away class, to be quite honest. He's going to have to improve again. I backed him at Ascot when he was second, and he, he he ran remarkably well to say that he was at one of two on the near side. But there has to be a niggling doubt that he might be hard to win with. I'm not sure, though. But I think it's definitely each way, but I'm not sure if 17-2 to two is massive yeah. each way value, really. He's 6-1 yeah. to one with Skybet being backed in. So. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I, 
yeah, I, I personally be swerving it, to be quite honest. But good luck. We, we've di we've discarded a horse before and it absolutely bolted up. So <laughs> <laughs> sure, if anything, this is a good omen. Uh, right, air gold cup time. <clears throat> Shall we get Adam's? Novel out of the way first. <laughs> uh, I'm actually well. I'm not going to say very much because I, I I wrote a piece and I'll tweet it and link it to people. But <laughs> if it rains tonight and I really do hope it rains, I really hope it rains tonight. I like advertising. If it rains tonight, <laughs> I don't see I don't see Jack Dexter being beaten. And I know he's top weight, but the last top weight to win this was Coastal Bluff back in 1996. And Statistics. They think, I like them. And also, the last Scottish winner carried top weight to victory back in 1975 as well. So the omens look, did look good, but if it keeps drying up, I would be worried. Although Jim Goldie has said he's a £10 better horse. Um, the other two that I've gone for are Jonathan, who has been um, quite considerably. He was um, in the Portland, he uh, missed the kick, and he spent half the race catching them up. And by the time he caught them up, he had no chance. If he if he breaks tomorrow in a where well, he goes into the field and like giving him like a five length head start, then I think he has a big chance because as I said last week with his mark and also Spinner Tricks, who was second to Baccarat in the Great St Wilfred, having tried to make all the running, uh, I think the price that will compare to Baccarat, it's there's, there's some value in there, and I know that front runners don't exactly have the best record in the Air Gold Cup, but I think she does have a big chance. Also, Baccarat is price-wise, so um, I, um, I'm not sure about Baccarat on the ground, to be quite honest, because he's done all his running on good ground. But if it oh. does keep drying up, he will have a big chance. That's, That's been uh, done. Price, That's price-wise as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's already into sevens from eights. I'm going to guess that part of your naughty lucky 15, Michael, is Lover Man. It is indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Michael, talk us through this one. Um, I was going to let Callum go first because then I can do a roundup oh. of half the field. Yeah, let's you, do that. Do you want to put? Gonna, a, do you want to do an Adam if I'm do allowed? Put, do you want to put a wig on or? <laughs> uh, go on. Can go I go? On. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Adam's just taken my big point about Baccarat and uh, <laughs> and spinner tricks. Um, yeah, I, I think the the Great St Wilfred is always a good race for this. Three of the last four winners ran in that race. N none of them actually won it. But Baccarat looks potentially a lot better than, than his mark of 100, and he fully deserves to be favourite. I say I do dis disagree with Jack Dexter. I think he's going to have to put up a very serious performance to win off 110. Yeah. I think that'll that'll take that'll be one of the best performances in a handicap probably since Hoofer actually in the Stewards Cup a few years back. Since then. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll, go, we'll go for real Damon racing. Since then. Jack Dexter. <laughs> Uh, Spinner Tricks, Spinner Tricks is definitely definitely the one for me. At I, th I cannot believe she's twenty five to one. She's in the form of her life. She's gone up ten pounds the last two runs, but there were two cracking runs, especially in the Great St Wilfred last time out. Uh, Connor Beasy takes off a good five pounds. Loves the grounds. Will love the the big field. I I, I cannot see why she is twenty five to one. She might not be well handicapped enough to win it, but she's got to be there or thereabouts. So I think uh, her. Uh, Tropics as well, I think, will run a good race. Whether he's again, whether he's well handicapped enough, I don't know. But he's, you know, it's, it's a different. I think Tropics is just as good, if not better, than Jack Dexter, and he's he's three pound less in the weights in the moment. Kubala is another with a, a real big chance, but I think Tropics and Baccarat for me will have a small bet on those two, and my main bet on Spinatrix. Yeah, the one thing about Spinatrix, I'm just going to keep you waiting a little bit more, Michael. <laughs> the one thing about Spinatrix is that he really, or she really likes Ripon. And that's say that. But... <laughs> she that's has won at Air, though, and she was fourth in the Silver Cup last yeah, year. Yeah, she was fourth yeah. in it last year, so... Just stealing Adam's points, then. Right, Adam's <laughs> points. <laughs> go on, Michael. Explode. Um, yeah, uh, just go on the Spinatrix, basically. I agree, but I think all of her runs, her good runs of late, have come at Rip and The other, the noughts in her um, in her form are actually from other other um, other tracks. But yeah, she could run well. I'm not not disputing that. We'll see. Um, Tropics is my selection. I've absolutely adored this horse, and he won a Newmarket listed race last time. And uh, despite the 
the weight is be a slight worry for me. I think he's a really, really good horse, and I'd hope he could he can run well. Of others, Baccarat has never raced on anything better and on anything worse than good. Gabriel's lad is interesting, but he's another one that dropping trip won't help, especially if the ground is is drying up because he's been done most of his winning over. Um, seven furlongs. Um, of others, Highland Calori would be nice to run well. I'd love Hoofit to run well. It was nice to see her come forth in the um, Sprint Cup. Uh, um, Haydock a couple of weeks ago. Mass Rally won the Silver Cup last year and bids to uh, go and win the big one this year. But for me, it's Tropics. I'd love Jack Dexter to run well, but off top weight, it's it's not the easiest task. Yeah, he's mm. been handed a very tough... Top- Although he has got a very good draw. And wasn't twenty two <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> where the bronze cup when it came from today? Or was that twenty five? Is that twenty five? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, my selection. <laughs> Spinatrix comes from twenty five. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Talk about talking it out. Uh, I'm gonna go for another claimer. Uh, Oshin Murphy rides Highland Calori for Andrew Boarding. And Andrew Boarding, interestingly, came out this week and said, he says something positive about his jockey, um, unlike Luca Kamani. Um, he said that he's not going to allow Oshin Murphy to ride in any races that are worth less than six grand, uh, six thousand pounds to protect his claim, which I think is very interesting. And today is a, well, I think is a very good use of his claim. He won last time at Warwick, beating Adam's love, SK, <laughs> SK love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, sorry. Were you saying and yours, Michael? <laughs> um, yeah, Highland Calori handed it to SK Love, <laughs> and it's gone up five pounds for that. But Ashley Murphy obviously takes that five pounds off, so we know that she's off a winning mark. And to be honest, I still think it's well handicapped in this. But like I say, it's a very very hard race. Um, I do think Spinatrix has got a chance, but there's so, there's so many in here that if they come back to form, then they could win. I.e., uh, Duke of Forenzi is probably the main, the main one I'm talking about there. But, it's, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm siding with Highland Calori and Arshin Murphy, but to be honest, if you find the winner of this one, well done, because it's a really hard race. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts? On this race? Yes, I've won. I'd oh, love to fit in Hawkeye the new to um, confirm Sprint Cup form at Haydock because yeah. they both ran really well that day. And they will go on the ground, so. And uh, 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 Hamza. And Hamza. Although, I'm not sure about the ground for Hamza. It's the only concern Possibly, I have. Yeah. 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 Um, right. Check questions. We've got one. Well, we've got our good friend, Pigeon. Martin Jenkins, Pigeon Island. <laughs> has come to us saying in the Silver Cup, it's worth a mention for onto a winner who, on Twitter, you might know them, uh, they've got Fast Shot at 33 to 1, who loves soft ground and his bottom weight. And that's the hashtag Pigeon Long Shot. So we wish you luck with that and all the onto a winner guys that hold shares in that horse. Um, I won't forget it this week. Best bets of the day. Adam. Okay, um... Spinning the tricks each way in the Air Gold Cup. You're still in Callum's. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Callum. The same one. Oh, I don't know this week. The the definite winner is Cassiano in the first, and I, I think Spinning yeah. tricks. Is, I'll go for Spinning tricks as well. Each way. Oh, we allow, uh, we allow two. In fact, I'll have five if that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, what? Which one are you going for, Cassiano um, or Spinning tricks? Not you. I don't know. I was, I was <laughs> if, just saying. All right, if we're doing a nap competition, like it has to win, then Cassiano. Boring. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna not be boring, and I'm gonna put my strong 75% record on the line with uh, in the last race at Air. Why born each way at 12 to one? Not with William Hill at seven to one. That's a disgraceful price, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> they that is a ridiculous. No, they know. Yeah, I'd love to say that they know, but that's just a ridiculous price, to be quite frank. 12 to 1 everywhere else, and they've gone 7s. That is ridiculous. Um, why born each way for me in the last air? Uh, Michael? Um, just the 5 o'clock at air is really interesting. I don't understand how half a sixpence is only 9 to 2. Uh, the only possible threat I could see 
um, is Lafayne, who was second to Sir, uh, who beat Sir Reginald, sorry, at Chester last time out. All the others don't look up to this level at all, or in fact, they don't look up to half a sixpence's level. I suppose he's a class two horse in a class three race. So if half a sixpence can show his best on soft ground, then he's he won the silver, uh, the Spring Cup. So he's yeah. just miles in. I'm sure <laughs> I couldn't understand it at all. So yeah, yeah. half a sixpence. Uh, we've had one more question looking at that. that is there one confirmed mudlark in any of the Channel 4 races that, you, that you're looking forward to seeing? The reason that I've remembered that is that Tarek 2 will go on the ground. Any rain is good for Tarek 2, who's top weight in the 5 o'clock. But are there any confirmed mudlarks that you can mention on Channel 4 for tomorrow? Jack Marek. Jack Dexter, Marek, yeah. Um... Yeah, they're probably, the, they're probably the main two, aren't they? They're probably Camborne, the main two. Camborne will appreciate the soft yeah, ground Camborne as well. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. It's the mudlarks. Um, Michael, do you want to get your naughty lucky 15 out of the way? Um, my naughty lucky for 15, my naughty... I managed to keep it to one meeting as well. There's plenty of... Uh, Plenty of prospects here. In the first race uh, for Midland Park Racing, we have Late Night Request. <laughs> right. Um, in the second race, I think we've already had this tipped up, Willie the Whipper. Sounds yep. a bit dangerous. Um, in the Silver Cup, Dick Boss, who's already oh. been, who has already featured on this race, yeah. on this um, this uh, side bit, my bit that's on a, the side. That's, that's, um, a, that's a Channel 4 stalwart now. He always, yeah. always appears in. And uh, in the last race, as uh, Luke has kindly already put a point out, Lover Man. That's not you, is it? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, one more thing that I'm going to mention before we auger off is um, me and Callum had... Um, well, I was going to word that weirdly. Me and Callum had a bit of fun the other day. Callum and I? <laughs> Callum and I had, had a very interesting bet the other day. There's a 10p Goliath, which amounts to £24.70 overall. But we, we, we started off with a, a roaring start, 12 to 1 and 7 to 1 winners, and thought we were in line for the million pounds that we, we rightly deserved. And then, then it went wrong, and we only had one 7 to 4 winner out of the rest, <laughs> <laughs> which went completely wrong. I mean, we still made profit, don't get me yeah. wrong, but for everyone out there... I think it would be absolutely hilarious if everyone put on the same Goliath bet and scared the hell out of the bookmakers. Um, so, if anyone would like to get involved with a 10p Goliath bet, our horses are as follows. In the 150 at Newbury, with the banker of the day, Cassiano. Um, in the 205 at Air, Willie the Whipper. The 230 at Newmarket, Amnesia. In the 255 at Newbury, Trade Commissioner. In the 315 at Air, Coral Mist. Uh, in the 340 at Newmarket, Broxbourne. In the 415 at Newmarket, oh god, Neng Nengay Neng and Boko. Nengay and Boko. Yeah. <laughs> That's a horrible name. And to round it off and win us our million is in the 535 at Air, Wyborn. Uh, we'll probably post screenshots of that bet in the morning, so. It would be hilarious if everyone joined us and we made profit, to be quite honest. Um, that's all we've got time for this week. Before we go, one more thing. Oh. I, would, I would like to wish Michael a happy, uh, yes. happy 18th happy birthday, birthday, birthday for Monday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, um, happy birthday Michael. Happy birthday. Cheers. <laughs> must be, it must be nice to now legally drink. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, this, he this, says this, sipping. This, this is sponsored by 7up. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me nothing for that <laughs> and, uh, and rightly so that was a really bad appetizer <laughs> sponsored oh, by and, w- and, one, and, w- and one more thing I'd like to wish Luke good luck tomorrow as well Yeah. yes Yeah. good yeah. luck um, for anyone that doesn't know Bet Racing Nation is a new TV channel a new, new TV show that's starting up it will be on preview channel 227 and I am going to be involved in a studio, and these lovely people that are accompanied here, from next week onwards, will be known as Bet Racing Nation Online. Uh, and we'll still be doing the same thing, but we'll, we'll be Skyping into the studio. We'll be doing it live in a studio. Uh, we are on air from 10 to 12. Um, and you can see my lovely face after getting up at about 6 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> 
So I You're not I selling look... it. You're not you're not selling it. You need to say like um Zoe Deschanel will be there or something. Michael <laughs> won't be there, so that's why you should <laughs> Um Yeah, Bet Racing Nation will be on air from ten till twelve tomorrow morning. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be eight till nine. And then we will keep you in the loop on any other programmes coming up. Uh we hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll leave Twitter names, blogs, blah, 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 in the box below. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a good give it a thumbs up. <laughs> if you thought it was okay, give it a thumbs up. Or watch it again and give it a thumbs up. Um, from all of us here, goodbye. Goodbye.